more time before we get too far along here. Oh, Lord Jesus, I uh, just thank you, Lord, for uh, safe travels up here um, to these wonderful people, Lord. And Lord, I just ask that you would uh, have me step aside, Lord, uh, so that you can minister, that you can uh, give your word, Lord. And that's been my prayer all week, um, that we would uh, just further the kingdom, further our faith, uh, get out of our comfort zone and um, uh, do things for you, Lord, in, in this life when we are called to so many glorious things in your name. And I just thank you for this time, and I thank you, Lord, for allowing me to uh, be able to do this. pray that you would calm my nerves and uh, speak through me, Jesus. I pray all these in your name. Amen. 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 All right, so the message that... Uh, has been laid on my heart for this week is God's desire for us to get out. No, that's the title. <laughs> get out is the title. Um, so keep this title in mind as we go through it this morning. Um, get out. But I'm gonna I'm gonna rewind just a little bit in my life all the way back to elementary school. Um, I struggled in school. Um, I couldn't read very well. And I remember, you know, in, uh, we would sit down in the classroom on the little squishy mats in a circle, and we would all take turns reading out of a chapter book. Um, and I remember being so terribly afraid. And my stomach would flip-flop. And I would have major anxiety. My hands would sweat. Um, and when it was my turn to read, the words would move on the page. And the room would kind of spin. And uh, I'd get vertigo terribly. And uh, um, kind of sway from side to side like you were in a boat almost in a terrible storm. I couldn't track with the lines very well. That's why I have a, a straight edge to follow my notes, because they still will start traveling on me. Um, and I remember the teacher, when, I, when I'd stumble on a word or I'd get stuck, she'd say, just sound it out. And I, I didn't understand that. I, I couldn't phonetically do that. Um, and I imagine it would be like you know any other fear in life. Um, you know, all these things that we become afraid of, um, and f the fear is real. Um, so I eventually got the reading thing down, um, but this fear followed me, followed me through school. I had a major phobia of speaking in front of people. Um, so instead of giving any oral speech, raising my hand to give an answer or to be called on, I would say nothing. And I just shrugged my shoulders. And uh, I would rather take a failing grade than to go through that. Um, I even tried a couple times later in high school. I got up front of the classroom, said a couple words, all the vertigo would kick in, and I would just sit back down. Um, so I didn't find out until into my adult years that I'm very dyslexic. And uh, it's actually a gift. I figured out that it is a tremendous gift for me. Um, and it is nothing short of a miracle that I stand before you today. Um, truly, all glory to God as he empowers me to be able to preach to you. Amen. Well, if you have your Bibles, turn with me to Matthew. I'm going to go to Matthew 14, starting in verse 22 through 33. We're going to dive into the profound passage and the remarkable event of Peter walking on the water with Jesus. So let's read that. 
Verse 22. Immediately he made the disciples get into the boat and go ahead of him to the other side, while he sent the crowds away. After he sent the crowds away, he went up on the mountainside by himself to pray. And when it was evening, he was there alone. The boat was already a long distance from the land, battered by the waves, for the wind was contrary. And in the fourth watch of the night, he came to them, walking on the sea. When the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were terrified. And they said, it's a ghost. And they cried out in fear. But immediately Jesus spoke to them, saying, Take courage, it is I. Do not be afraid. Peter said to him, Lord, if it's you, command me to come to you on the water. And he said, Come. And Peter got out of the boat and walked on the water and came towards Jesus. But seeing the wind, he became frightened. And beginning to sink, he, he cried out, Lord, save me. Immediately, Jesus stretched out his hand and took hold of him and said, Oh, you of little faith, why did you doubt? And then when they got into the boat, the wind stopped. And those who were in the boat worshipped him, saying, You are certainly God's son. This passage is so rich, and uh, I could bring dozens of lessons from it. So I hope you're free until <laughs> about dinner. Uh, no, I'm just kidding. Um, I've got five points for you today to take home. Five points. It, it was three, but I couldn't ignore prayer and fear, so... They're added in too. So the five points, if you're taking notes, are prayer, courage, faith, doubt, and fear. That's prayer, courage, faith, doubt, and fear. And my first point is prayer. The passage of Scripture is focused on Peter and how he walked on the water. But before Peter even enters into the narrative, the passage describes Jesus sending the disciples to their next destination of ministry. On the other side of the Sea of Galilee, he sent away the crowds, and we find Jesus withdrawing to a mountain to pray. It's Matthew 14, 23. It's really easy to overlook or skip over this point and dive right into the walking on water part because that's where the excitement is. But I believe this is here to show us, to teach us by Jesus' example, that we need the solitude and the communion with our Father in the midst of all life's storms. Um, Jesus shows us the importance of anchoring ourselves in prayer, seeking guidance, strength, and peace from the almighty source of all power. And in our lives, prayer serves as our compass, a compass through the storms that we encounter. Prayer helps us to discern God's will to make grounded decisions in faith and not in fear. Through prayer, we are able to tap into the boundless resources of heaven, the cattle on a thousand hills, accessing almighty strength and wisdom, power and grace, empowering us to walk on the waters of uncertainty and navigate life's storms with confidence. We were never made to be independent from God. We are designed to be connected to Him in prayer. Um, I'd like you to turn to Philippians. 
book of Philippians, we're going to go uh, Philippians 4. Philippians 4, starting in verse 6, we're going to read 6 and 7. So, Philippians 4. Be anxious for nothing, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be, known, be made known to God, and the peace of God, which surpasses all comprehension, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. My second point is courage. We see the disciples, um, we see their courage as they embark on their journey across the Sea of Galilee. They leave the safety of the shore and Jesus behind them. Um, one of my favorite actors is John Wayne. My, my dad used to watch a lot of his movies, and, um, so he's become a favorite of mine. John Wayne says, uh, courage is being scared to death, but saddling up anyway. <laughs> courage is being scared to death, but saddling up anyway. And it takes courage to obey Jesus, mm -hmm. to venture into the unknown, to trust his plan for our lives. Peter's bold request, Lord, if it's you, command me to come on the water reveals a very courageous heart. One willing to get out of the safety of the boat onto the turbulent water. And this reminds me of what A.W. Tozer said. True faith is not passive but active. Yeah. Let me say that again. True faith <coughs> is not passive but active. So to have courageous faith requires us to take a few risks into the unknown with conviction. Peter's act of courage in getting out of the boat demonstrates the transformative faith in action. We know that Peter has spent considerable time with Jesus to this point, and his courage to get out of the boat is linked to how well he knew and trusted Jesus. And we can use the example of Peter to help us to face life's storms with courage and unwavering trust when we spend time in prayer with the Savior. In our journey of life, um, we need to get out of our comfort zones. We need to weather the storms with courage and be a testimony of the transformative power of being guided by the hand of the Savior as we walk on the waters of life. I know too many people who are numb, lulled to sleep, completely passive in their life regarding what we are called to as believers. And we are called to some amazing things in Christ. To love, share the gospel, live in holiness, serve others, pray continuously, and most importantly, bear fruit. We need to put down our devices, turn off the TV, pick up the word, Pray and ask God where and how we can do these things with his courage and power. We need to get out of the boat and get walking with Jesus on the water with courage. My third point is faith. So in the midst of the storm, Peter demonstrates remarkable faith when he gets out of the boat to walk on the water towards Jesus. Faith is not being intellectual or having blind optimism. 
It's a deep trust, and it's a knowledge of our Savior's character and His promises. It is the assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things not seen. Faith enables us to see beyond the circumstances and challenges of life. It anchors our souls in the unchanging truth of God's word. Faith is not the absence of doubt or fears or struggles. Rather, it's the decision to trust God despite them. Amen. It's choosing to believe that God is faithful, even when the circumstances of life show otherwise. As we grow our faith through prayer and scripture and fellowship with him and fellow believers, iron sharpening iron, we discover a deeper intimacy with God. And it sustains us through life's storms and into life devoted and dedicated to serving our Savior Jesus and those who follow him. I remember uh, it was about 27 years ago or so. Um, the first time I got out in faith, God was nudging me to face my fear of speaking. Um, so at the time we were, we were going to a little church and there were some men in that church who uh, would get together for men's breakfast. And uh, they were looking for people to give a talk or a message or something. And I was moved to give my testimony. Um, and the only reason I was able to get that five minute talk <laughs> was with the help of the Lord can't find the words to describe to you how really agonizing that was for me to do. But I did it. Amen, brother. And, I, and I proved I could do it without throwing up <laughs> or passing out. But I was sure, absolutely sure I'd never do it again. <laughs> Philippians 1.6 says, knowing that he who began a good work in us will carry it through to completion. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So God, from, from there, um, put more opportunities for me to get out. Get out in faith in front of people. God moved me to speak at my mom's funeral. This was a huge faith leap for me. Um, Jesus even helped me cry through a uh, brief gospel message. <laughs> um, it's one of the hardest things I've ever really done. Um, I was in front of friends and family and I'd say most non-believers. Um, and through the years, God put smaller steps of faith out in front of me. We were attending a, a large church and... Uh, he led me to join the church choir. And uh, he led us to do Bible studies in our home, which scared me to death to have people intimately in my home as I taught. That was so out of my comfort zone. Um, I started church service off by giving announcements regularly, then leading communion, and God eventually led me to get out in faith and preach for the first time. I know. Ultimately, faith is a journey of a continual surrendering of our will to God's. A daily choice to trust Him. No matter what lies ahead, it is this unwavering faith that enables us to get out of the boat onto the water to defy all odds, overcome obstacles that stand in our way. As we fix our eyes on Jesus, the author and perfecter of our faith, Hebrews 12, 2, 
May we find courage to get out in faith in our lives. Point four is doubt. The disciples were battered by the wind for hours. When they left the shore, it was evening. And when Jesus appeared to them walking on the water, it was in the fourth watch of the night. That means almost morning. Yeah. It was between 3 and 6 a.m. Um, they were out on the sea all night. And this was after a long day. They fed 5,000 people that day in that miracle. They were tired. The winds and waves buffeted against them. Fear gripped their hearts that they would perish and not make it to the other shore. Similarly, in our lives, with the storms we face, whether they're financial difficulties, health issues, relationship struggles, spiritual battles, addictions, sins, all of these can just debilitate us. And the winds and waves can beat us down, knock us over. And all this can invoke feelings of doubt. Doubts creep in when we question God's goodness, His faithfulness, and His ability to get us through the storms in life. We wonder if He hears our prayers, if He cares about our struggles, and if He's truly in control. This doubt often stems from a lack of understanding or a, a distorted view of God's character. Mm -hmm. When we allow doubt to take roots in our hearts, it erodes our faith and it undermines our confidence in God's promises. Mm -hmm. Instead of letting doubt take control of us, keeping us from the will of God, we need to ask Him for help when doubt creeps in. If we ask for help like Peter did, he will stretch out his hand and help us in our doubt mm -hmm. so that we're able to get through the storm. He will help us when the wind and the waves pound against us. His promises, he promises us that if we ask anything according to his will, he will hear us. That's 1 John 5.14. Okay, my fifth point is fear. So fear, on the other hand, is it is a response to the unknown, the unpredictable. It paralyzes us, robbing us of peace and joy. It hinders us from fully embracing God's plan for our lives. The disciples' fear of the wind and the waves caused them to lose sight of Jesus, the very source of their strength. When Peter began to sink, he took his focus off Jesus, and he focused on the wind and the storms. Likewise, when we focus on circumstances, our sins or our past, Rather than on God, fear distorts our perception and it leads us down a path of despair. It prevents us from taking necessary steps to follow Jesus. Amen. That Jesus reminds us not to be afraid, for he is always with us. When we fix our eyes on him, fear loses its grip on us and on our hearts, and we find courage to get out in faith. Amen. We see in verse 26, the disciples, in, in their fear, they get all worked up on what they assume was a ghost and not Jesus coming towards them. Assuming that this ghost was going to finish them off from what the storm has started on them. And I equate this to 
A child who is afraid works themselves up in the middle of the night, you know, because there's a boogeyman in the closet or under the bed. This child gets so afraid that the slightest little noise or a shadow grips them so much that they can't even get out of bed. And using the bathroom in the middle of the night is a major ordeal. When they finally muster up enough courage to get out of the bed and run down the hall as fast as they can, and then back to the bedroom as fast as they can, like they're going to outrun the boogeyman, we can do the same thing. As adults, in our own heads, with negative self-talk, the whispers of our own thoughts it exasperates our fear and our doubt, Re reinforcing lies and insecurities that threaten to overwhelm us. We tell our, our, ourself things like, I'm not good enough, not strong enough, I'm not worthy, I'm too old, too young. I can't, I'm afraid. I'm too rotten. My sin is too big. I can't talk to my neighbor. I'm an introvert. I can't praise the Lord. I can't sing. I'm not smart. It's all these I can'ts, I'm nots, I'm too. This self, this negative self dialogue and our thoughts shape our belief. And it affects our actions. Yet, as believers, we are called to silence those voices of doubt Amen. and fear with the truth of God's Word. We are reminded that God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and love and sound mind. 2 Timothy 1.7 We are encouraged to take every thought captive to the obedience of Christ. Yes. 2 Corinthians 10.5 When we fix our eyes on Jesus, the author and the perfecter of our faith, these winds and waves of doubt, they lose, it totally loses their power over us. We discover that His grace is sufficient for us and His strength is made perfect in our weakness. 2 Corinthians 12, 19. As we surrender our doubts and our fears to him, he will calm the storms that rage within us. With his peace that surpasses all understanding. Philippians 4, 7. Peter's faith Though it was initially strong, it wavers as he notices the wind and the waves around him. Yet, even in his moment of doubt, Peter's faith allows him to cry out yeah. to Jesus for help. Like Peter, our faith is going to falter at times. But as long as we follow Peter's example... And call out to the Lord, He will help us. Amen. And it is through these moments that we learn to rely more fully on God's strength and not our own. As the disciples sailed through the stormy sea, doubt and fear crept into their minds. Similarly, doubt often clouds our faith when we face check when we, we face challenges and uncertainties. We question whether God is truly with us, whether his promises hold true, and whether we are capable of overcoming these obstacles. Yet just as Jesus reassured the disciples in the boat, he also reminds us to cast aside our doubts and place our trust in him. So I'm going to close, but uh, I've got a little added bonus for you. Aside from the five points. So I, as I was reflecting on 
these five points and all the ones that didn't make the cut. Um, I, I was reflecting on this passage of Peter walking on the water and all of its applications of our faith journey. The one thing that I kept wondering about that just kept kind of being there and gnawing on me. What happened to the ones in the boat? Those disciples, they just stayed there. Why would they do that? Why did they stay in the boat? If I saw somebody walking on the water, I'd want to do it. Jesus may have gently corrected Peter when he said, you of little faith, why did you doubt? Verse 31. But Peter had way more faith than those guys sitting in the boat. Yep. Their decision to stay in the boat can be just like the struggles that we face when we're confronted with opportunities to get out in our faith. It's easy to relate with the disciples who stayed behind. The storm raged around them. The winds howled. The waves crashed against the boat. Fear gripping their hearts, causing them to cling tightly to what felt safe and familiar. Yet their decision to stay in the boat also serves as a sobering reminder of the consequences of allowing fear to dictate our actions. While they remained safe in the boat, they missed out on this miraculous encounter that Peter experienced with Jesus. In our own lives, there are moments when God calls us to get out of the boat in faith, to leave behind the safety of our comfort zones, embrace the unknown. It might be reaching out to a neighbor, sharing the gospel with somebody who needs Christ in their life, taking on a new ministry, or preaching a sermon. Like the disciples in the boat, we may feel the, the pull of fear holding us back, whispering doubts and insecurities in our ears. Could be the damage of our past, the sins that entangle us like seaweed. But just as Jesus called Peter to walk on the water, he also calls us to trust in him and get out in faith, knowing that He is with us. He is with us always, even in the midst of our storms. So therefore, let us learn from the disciples who remain in the boat. Acknowledge the temptation to let fear paralyze our faith. Let us also be inspired by Peter's example recognizing that even in our moments of doubt and uncertainty, Jesus calls us to trust him, to get out in faith, knowing he is able to do immeasurably more than we can do or imagine. So may we be connected to our God in intimate prayer, Take courage to heed his call. Gain faith to get out of the boat. Experience the fullness of life. Leave our doubt in the boat. Conquer our fear by keeping our eyes on Jesus and walking on water in obedience to our faithful Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Let's close in prayer. Oh, Heavenly Father, Lord, I just pray that you would use us to get out, that we would trust you, that we would call on you, that fear and doubt would be behind us. 
that we would change our neighborhoods, change our world in your name. That you would give us courage and faith. May we be connected to you, Lord, in prayer. And may we get out for you and do things that you call us to do, Lord, in all of the areas of life, whether it's putting sin behind us, uh, acknowledging you as our Savior, um, and listening to what you have for our lives. It's better than what we have for ourselves always. Help us to focus on these things, Lord. And I thank you for this time and these people. Just pray all this in your name.